Order members, would members resume their seat? Mr Jim Allister has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. I would remind members that if they wish to ask the supplementary question, that they should rise uh, continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment to outline the steps being taken to protect jobs and secure the future of the Michelin plant in Ballymena. Over the past number of years, Invest Northern Ireland has assisted Michelin Tire PLC with a number of financial interventions totalling four million seven hundred and fifty four thousand two hundred and ninety seven pounds. The objective of these interventions was to secure Michelin's comp their competitive position within the Michelin Group. The recent announcement is due to issues relating to overcapacity of circa 5 million truck tyres in Europe and a substantial increase in imports of truck tyres from the Far East, particularly China. Invest Northern Ireland has been in regular contact with senior Michelin personnel and was engaged in ongoing discussions related to further investments. So clearly, therefore, today's announcement, Deputy Speaker, is extremely disappointing. I can say my department and Invest Northern Ireland will, of course, engage with the company <coughs> to fully understand its decision to close the plant. We appreciate the company's commitment to supporting its employees to find alternative employment with its £5 million development fund. Invest Northern Ireland will work with the company and all the relevant partners, including Mid and East Antrim Council, and the Department of Employment and Learning, who have been extremely helpful uh, throughout this whole process to help staff to consider all of the alternative employment options. I call Jim Allister to ask the supplementary. This has been a catastrophic blow for Ballymena on the back of the um, equally devastating loss of JTI. And what my constituents and I want to know is, did this department, this executive, and Invest NI do all they could and should have done to avert this situation? Because we note that many of these jobs are going in foot of a £52 million investment in the Dundee plant. What did Scotland offer that Invest NI didn't offer? And has the contact been towards increasing the productivity and the capacity in Ballymena? And on the critical issue the of energy, asked, the, the, the United Union, United Union say they met the minister in July on this very issue, order, and three order, months order, later are waiting to hear order, from him. Was order, the minister please. in Invest NI asleep at the wheel? Members are allowed, are allowed to ask the question, and then they're called to ask the supplementary question. I allowed the member to ask two supplementary questions, and he intended to persist further. I would ask the member to respect the chair. Minister. Invest Northern Ireland were meeting with this company uh, almost on a monthly basis, if not an actual monthly basis. Um, there was reports as lately as September which didn't indicate to us this announcement. Can I say I got news of this announcement around about 11 o'clock today. At 10 o'clock, uh, there, there was no information um, being given out. The member has raised some questions about Invest Northern Ireland. I think Invest Northern Ireland have an excellent track record in attracting foreign direct investment to the Mid and East Antrim area. I appreciate while the member is from North Antrim, and I appreciate the work that Ian Paisley Jr., the Member of Parliament, has already done uh, in around the generous redundancy uh, arrangements uh, that are there, and also in terms of the £5 million development fund that is there to try and assist 
and support people that are devastatingly affected in this situation. I grew up as a child in Belfast in the 1980s in a working class community. I know exactly from friends and family how devastating unemployment actually can be. But to put on the record, the, in 2013-2014, in terms of foreign direct investment into the Mid and East Antrim area, 4,760 jobs uh, were created. And over the four-year period from 2010 to 2014, Order. Order. Mr. Speaker, can I resume the statement? Thank you. 2013 to 14, 4,760 jobs were created through the excellent track record that Invest Northern Ireland has created. From 2009-10 to 2013-14, there were 23 inward visits. Invest Northern Ireland made Invest Northern Ireland, Mr. Speaker, this is to the Mid and East Antrim area, and I'm sure the member would be aware, Deputy Speaker, that I think according to the last census, some 40% of the people in Northern Ireland work outside their parliamentary constituency. So we're looking at the Mid and East Antrim area. We're looking at the 4,760 jobs that were created. We're looking at the 23 inward investment. Investment Northern Ireland has made 83 offers to support inward investment projects that have led to over 84 million pounds of investment. And my officials, when we got the news, have been in contact with Michelin. And I understand they have no complaints regarding the support that Invest Northern Ireland has given. Now, can I say to the member who seems to think that shouting will help somebody's constituency, I understand the difficulties that Michelin faced. They had a downturn of some five million tyres in terms of the market, which is very difficult uh, to deal with. Our responsibility now is to see what we can do in terms of creating real employment and training opportunities. I have just finished a very detailed meeting with the Minister for Employment and Learning as to what we can do uh, regarding putting the colleges uh, to work alongside to ensure people that need accreditation for skills that they already possess, that they can have that to see what the Social Security Agency and all the relevant agencies can do. And working alongside Minister Farry, we will put together individual programmes and we will put together uh, group programmes. And the Northern Regional College is available and will work constructively to respond. There is a good skill set. While other people may wish to talk down Invest Northern Ireland and the skills, of people in North Antrim and the Mid and East Antrim area. They should remember with Wright Bus, with Schrader, with Randox and with Moy Park. In this area we have some of the world's leading companies. Schrader and others, I understand, are advertising today. We will do all in our power to ensure families who have had some devastating news coming up to Christmas that we can give them every opportunity to achieve new employment. Can I remind members and indeed the Minister that there is much interest in this subject and I would ask members to be concise in both their question and their answer. Uh, I call um, Patsy McGlone. I call you and uh, I thank the, the Minister for his intervention on this issue. Um, it would be helpful if the Minister could, could give us some sort of indication as to how many meetings have taken place around this matter directly with himself and secondly uh, this is an issue which has cropped up time and again, and I realise Ballymena and North Antrim has been brutalised over this last wee while between Patton and what some of us know as Gallagher's and, and now more recently Michelin. Um, the European Globalisation Adjustment Fund, which has been ignored for whatever reason or other and is used in other parts of the EU to help and support people at this drastic, awful time uh, for them and their families. Can I thank the member for his question? Can I also say that in terms of Invest Northern Ireland support for Michelin Tire PLC, I say there are quarterly reports uh, that come through, and I understand there were monthly visits. 
I have to say that this news of the closure, because uh, I understand some people are saying they predicted it, I understand that the Member of Parliament was even in discussions recently with the local management of the company and others, and we were unaware that this was to close. The information I got, even though I was getting texts and emails as early as 10 o'clock this morning, the official information that we were given as a department was round about 11 o'clock, and it was embargoed until 12 o'clock and announced today. The company was complete, nearing completion of an investment program of 11.7 million, which commenced in 2008. This was extended to enable expenditure up to 2015 to be eligible. The company was also offered 1.226 million for training and development over the last five years. In 2014, Invest Northern Ireland offered a £750,000 capital grant in support of the installation of an in-house plant to generate a percentage of their electricity requirements. The project was to commence in 2017. The Invest Northern Ireland team has worked closely with the Michelin management to improve the Ballymena plant's competitiveness in relation to other Michelin plants. Uh, progress had been made in many areas with intergroup efficiencies, but there has been an oversupply and cheap imports forced Michelin's senior management, I understand, to take this decision. There are other competitive pressures that are outside Invest Northern Ireland's control or influence uh, that were there in terms of energy costs, in terms of distribution costs, and particularly in terms of currency fluctuations. I call Paul Free. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I have just left the Mitchell plant, having met with John Malstead, the plant manager on the site, and having spoken to many employees who are absolutely devastated at this news uh, today. Uh, can I ask the Minister that he does everything in his power, along with other executive ministers, to enable the proper training and support to be placed in Michelin and indeed Ballymena because of the job losses in JTA, B&Q and others in that area of late uh, patents also. Could I ask the Minister to ensure that someone within his department and other departments that are in, in the co-face of this actually supports those employees as much as they can. Can I also ask the Minister... I think the asked this question. Minister, be of no Minister, Minister. I understand the position uh, that people are in, having experienced it within my own family, to see how devastating news of unemployment can be. I also understand that this is going to be a, a, a phased process over, over two and a half years. And I want to assure the member that from the First and Deputy First Minister, who have spoken already on this uh, situation today, that everything will be done from the executive, from leadership level through. I've had a very, had a very uh, difficult meeting in terms of content, but a very robust and healthy meeting with the Employment and Learning Minister as we look to see what we can do in a collaborative exercise. Firstly, uh, we, I do welcome the fact that there, there is a generous redundancy package. I do welcome the fact that there is a £5 million community development fund. I've also been speaking to the Member of Parliament, Ian Paisley Jr., uh, in relation to that area. I know that, uh, while others shout, he has been responsible for bringing in a number of uh, potential investors and orders from Singapore, from Taiwan and from Gibraltar, and uh, that he is hopeful uh, in the not too distant future to see some success uh, coming from those visits, which shows it's important to actually do something as opposed to shouting from a sedentary position about the circumstances. But we will do all in our power with the Social Security Agency. We will do all in our power to ensure people that may be coming at 16 years of age or 18 years of age, and they've got the skills and skills that they can transfer. The Employment Learning Minister and myself will ensure that with the colleges, we get those people, whether it's short courses or whatever is needed. I understand from the Minister the Northern Regional College is ready to act to get those people accredited. Now, while there has been the difficult news and you've outlined correctly some of the big difficulties that there have been in the area with JTI and others. 
I think it would be important also to emphasize that there are some world-class facilities in this area. I mentioned some of them earlier, Deputy Speaker, the Wright Bus, the Schraders, the Randuxes, the Moy Parks. They are recruiting, they are looking for skill sets, and we will do all in our power to tailor those who are losing their jobs to support them in terms of getting quality alternative employment. Can I remind members again that this is not an opportunity to make a statement, it's an opportunity to ask the question. I call Daki Mackay. I ask Colin Coeur, uh, and I have been speaking to many employees and indeed their families today who have been left utterly devastated uh, in the mouth of Christmas. So I think we need to do all we can uh, for those families in the, in the weeks and months ahead. Can I ask the Minister, does he recognise now that there is a crisis in manufacturing? Uh, we have a growing list uh, of manufacturers who, for a number of factors that have already been alluded to, are looking uh, elsewhere. What can be done to prevent this uh, drip feed uh, that is increasing, uh, increasingly looking towards these, but also, I suppose, in terms of uh, Britain uh, uh, as well, in terms of cheap imports and energy costs. These issues haven't been addressed. Uh, and what I am concerned about is the fact that the United Union have said that they have raised issues with yourself that haven't been acted on. Can the Minister explain what is the situation in regard to the United Union? Uh, and what strategy he will now put in place to prevent this happening again and to prevent this happening to the families that are left devastated in North Antrim this evening. First thing, and if you don't listen to anything else that I say, the thing that will transform and game change heavy manufacturing in Northern Ireland is a reduction in our corporation tax. I know the parties are working very hard and I hope to see a positive response with a date and a rate set to reduce corporation tax, because the information that I'm getting from the Centre for Economic Policy, uh, if we set a date and a rate uh, in 2017, the initial information that I was given at 12.5% was we could create 30 to 40,000 new jobs in Northern Ireland and grow our economy from 2017 to 2033 by 10 per cent. So if there is to be a game changer, that is for all the parties to assist me in getting that date and rate of corporation tax set and lowered, because I can assure the House I can't go into the confidential details of the companies that I'm dealing with. But I can give the House an assurance of this. There is significant investment in terms of jobs and for our economy if we can set that date and rate. And even if we were to set it later on, the fact that we have set it, and most companies are working on a three to five year plan, I am being informed that a lot of that investment will occur immediately. There are challenges that we have with energy costs. And I had a general meeting with Unite in July, and we did discuss uh, energy costs. And I have to deal with energy costs, but I also have to deal with uh, security of supply and I also have to deal with the burden that there would be uh, on the domestic uh, householder. So there are things that we, we, we have to manage, but there are other things that we can really produce a game changer of. And I say to this House again, a prize of over 30,000 new jobs for Northern Ireland will be the game changer that will transform our economy if we set a reduction of our corporation tax and the date for that, when that is to be done. And friends, that really is a prize that we cannot afford to miss. I call Robin Swan. Much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Minister, I've listened to your platitudes for Invest NI, but I can assure you there'll be little solace to the 860 families in and around North Antrim tonight who are looking at a future without a job or a major breadwinner coming in. And the redundancy packages may be generous, but they don't put a salary into that house that's coming forward. You've referenced the great training opportunities that will be coming forward and opportunities in the future between yourself and the Dell Minister. Those are the same opportunities that have been offered to the 120 or 1,200 employees from JTI, the 200 from BNQ, the 500 from Patents. Now you get 160 added to that from no, Gallagher's. Where are these job opportunities going to come from? because I don't see corporation tax wouldn't have kept JTI, wouldn't have kept Paddens, and wouldn't have kept Gallagher's, and wouldn't have kept Mitchell. 
Well, I think, Deputy Speaker, it's important to talk up the skills that exist within the constituency to potential investors. The member foolishly may refer to Invest Northern Ireland as platitudes, but as I said, the track record of creating 4,760 jobs for families is not platitudes. The offer uh, of supporting inward investment of over £84 million of investment is not a platitude. The 23 inward investment visits is not a platitude. The reality is this. We have a chance. The legislation is passed. We have a chance in this House to set our date and rate of corporation tax. The member foolishly may think that he knows more than the likes of Professor Neil Gibbons and others from the Centre for Economic Policy that provide the independent advice. Uh, if I may, I will just take the advice of some of the top three economists in Northern Ireland instead of his foolishness. And we are told that we have an opportunity of 30 to 40,000 new jobs coming from one of the top three economists in Northern Ireland. Now, the member may want to shout down 30 to 40,000 new jobs. In that case, he would not only be failing North Antrim, he would be failing Northern Ireland. I call Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Minister, for the information which you have brought to us this evening. Minister, can I ask you now that you are back in office, uh, and I accept that this news came to you um, uh, out of the blue uh, today, but maybe there were other opportunities that you have missed by not being here. But can I ask you, Minister, with regards to energy supply, because that seems to me to be key to maintaining a large manufacturing industry in Northern Ireland, what action will be taken to ensure that the north-south in uh, uh, interconnector and the Moyle connector will be uh, up and running and delivering electricity at competitive European rates? And what action are you going to take beyond the Dell Minister and Office of First and Deputy First Minister to contact counterparts in Europe to ensure that this matter is resolved. Can I say that the, uh, I know there's some sniping at the start of that comment before you came to a very constructive uh, question. Can I say there was nothing that was indicated in the monthly visits to Invest Northern Ireland? And can I say as lately as without getting into the contents of a private meeting that when the Member of Parliament Ian Paisley visited the local management, there was nothing raised with us to indicate there were any difficulties. In the last quarterly report, I think from September, indicated output was up. So the first part of your question, sniping doesn't really count. In terms of uh, energy costs, uh, the executive is putting £30 million into expanding our gas infrastructure to give consumers uh, more choice. We have faced a difficult choice in balancing continued support for renewables against consumer bills. I have put forward proposals which avoid putting that additional cost uh, on to Northern Ireland consumers. And I know the regulator is working to reform the single wholesale electricity market in the island uh, of Ireland because wholesale costs make up two thirds of our electricity bill. A uh, review of competitiveness of our energy markets has been undertaken by the utility regulator, and that has recently concluded that, that competition uh, is effective. While it is a big difficulty, it should be noted that. Most businesses have energy costs around the EU average, but I appreciate the large-scale users. And we don't get an exact because they negotiate their contracts, contracts separately. They have comparatively higher costs against their, uh, their, their, their competitors, and we've got to do something. There's things that we can't do. There is a triangle. There's costs there, yes, but there's also security of supply, and there's also emissions. And we have, you can't just take cost without looking at security of supply or without looking out of emissions. So you have to take a balanced approach there. The game changer, and I will repeat it until I'm blue in the face, the game changer for this House is to set the date and rate of corporation tax. Because if we look back in 16 years' time at up to 40,000 jobs lost and our economy underperforming by 10 per cent, the salience of what I am saying, let us set the date and rate and let us give our manufacturing back a competitive advantage. I call David McElveen. 
you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I mean, the Minister will be aware that even in the darkest days of this province, Ballymena was recognised as a private sector powerhouse uh, due to its high level of private industry. There is a real genuine fear in the area that this reputation is slowly but surely starting to slip away. Would the Minister agree with me uh, that a task force should be set up as soon as possible with all of the relevant stakeholders around it to ensure that Ballymena's reputation uh, as an economic powerhouse for the private sector is not further damaged? Certainly, I can assure you that anything I can do uh, in a task force capacity as an executive or working most directly and currently with the Employment Learning uh, Minister, we will be done and, and will be done for, for the people involved. And it's important that we take a whole view of the Mid and uh, East Antrim area. It's important that we also take a look at foreign direct investment to Northern Ireland because Northern Ireland has outperformed the rest of the United Kingdom. We've out, you know, up until about 20, August 2014, we talked about outperforming every other part of the United Kingdom, with the exception of London, and people said, well, look, you can't compete against London. But from mid-2014, August 2014, we actually overtook, and we have, we have more foreign direct investment coming to Northern Ireland. And 80 per cent, don't take my word for it, Take the word of 80% of the foreign direct investment that has come to Northern Ireland because those businesses have subsequently reinvested. 80% of everybody who have, who have sucked it and seen have, have then turned around and put more investment into Northern Ireland. And it is still that area with its right bus, its Schraders, its Randoxes, its Moy Parks is still a world leader, and we will do all in our part to ensure it stays that way. I call Stephen Agnew. Hey, Speaker. The Minister has said there were no concerns raised in the monthly meetings with InvestNI, but as been said by a number of members, Unite raised their concerns in July and were told they had nothing to worry about. Why did the Minister not listen to Unite and why did he not act on their concerns? I had a very uh, positive meeting. I'm not sure that summary that the member has given is accurate and certainly wouldn't be accurate of my recollection uh, or of the people that were with me at that meeting. I understand press releases have gone out. I understand also that uh, when Unite requested that meeting of me, uh, we asked them had they anything specific, and they had said there was no specific area they wanted to speak about. They were talking about generally issues that affected Unite and generally issues that affected our manufacturing strategy. We had a very constructive and healthy meeting with Unite. I've been a trade union member for over a couple of decades of my life. I, I had a very constructive and healthy meeting with the members of Unite in July. It should be said there was no indication at that stage either from Michelin uh, or from the local management of the company or from anybody else that there was any difficulties leading to the announcement that we had today. As recently as a number of weeks ago, as I've said to you, the Member of Parliament met with local management and we, we, we didn't have any indication that this was going to happen. What we discussed then is what we would do in terms of energy costs, and I did say, and I always will say, the best way to create jobs, quality jobs, and employment for our people in Northern Ireland. We can't use the state aid that we did before. The European rules forbid that. We can debate whether they're right or wrong, but they're there, and I have to observe the law. What we can do is change our it set a date and rate of corporation tax that could put 30 to 40,000 new jobs, grow our economy by 10 per cent. And that is the message that I think creating employment and quality employment is everything that any sensible trade union would want to take forward. I call David McNary. Speaker. Will the Minister report back to us on this despairing uh, situation, telling us from Michelin what are their intentions? Is there a future beyond 2018? Are there production challenges that they're willing to entertain? And if not, will he tell us where are these jobs in Ballymena to take on the skilled workers between now and 2018? The information uh, we got back, uh, the information I've got this morning uh, from the company um, was that, uh, it, that, that they were going to close the complete site. My sympathy. For what it's worth, I have every empathy with the 860 people who have been told they've lost their jobs. 
70 contractors uh, prop there as well. Um, and the information that I have got is that it will be a phased rundown uh, over two and a half years. I hope we can learn some of the lessons and the good practice that there was with JTI in terms of retraining, in terms of generous redundancy uh, support uh, for families. But I understand that they faced a major challenge. In addition to energy and logistics, they faced a major challenge because in the truck tire market, um, there was a five million downturn. A five million uh, downturn, and they faced real challenges uh, from the Asian markets. I understand each of the five uh, European sites that they have, uh, they regarded as uh, inefficient. There, there are logistical uh, issues that there are there, but we have got to look at now what we can do. And what we can do is use that five million pounds of a community development fund constructively. What we can do is say to people that are existing working there and, and we're going to be phased out over the two and a half year period, what skills do you have that the other companies in the area could utilize? The right buses, the Schraders, the Randocks, the Moy Parks, the advertisements are out there. What do we need to do either to accredit your training or to upskill you, to put you in a position uh, that you can take advantage of these jobs that are being advertised. What we can do, and the Employment Minister has put the Northern Regional College on notice, we have their full agreement that people that have the skills but don't necessarily have the certification of those skills, we will put courses in place that they can get the necessary certification to go onto their CV to render them eligible uh, for those jobs. We will look at the skill sets. We will do individual one-to-one -one appointments. We will do uh, group appointments, and we will bring to people's attention the advertisement that I understand that exists for jobs that are in this area. But it's not just the jobs, I could say to Mr. McNary, that exist in the area. It's also the jobs that we can bring into the area. And I'm in a privileged position as Enterprise Minister. I know the significant global companies that are looking at Northern Ireland. I know the investment and the jobs that they intend to do if, if this House gets its act together and sets a date and rate of corporation tax. 30 to 40,000 jobs are a massive opportunity, and we can't afford to miss it. And that is the end of the period available for urgent oral question. Unfortunately, not everyone was able to place their question. But members,